to episode two of the Zazu podcast. Uh, my name is Colleen, and you can find me on Revelry as Wolbox, on Instagram as Wol underscore Box, and you can find my Etsy shop by searching for Zazu Yarns on Etsy. I will, you can see that right here, I guess. Um, first of all, I want to thank everyone that watched my podcast, because I was already really happy when 10 people watched it. And I guess I have over 300 views right now, so that's beyond what I expected. Um, I especially want to thank Margaret from the Sheep... Sheep... <laughs> the Sheepishly Sharing Podcast. And um, Maya from the Show My Lean Podcast. Um... Of course, Margaret showed my video in hers, so all of you guys came and checked me out, which is wonderful. And um, Maya also mentioned my podcast, so a double thumbs up. Um, then uh, I will tell you something about my weekend, because... Um, as I already told you, I live in Utrecht, which is in the Netherlands, and uh, this weekend the Tour de France started uh, in my city. So uh, we had a whole weekend of party and, um, well, looking at the cyclists. So, um, on Saturday, we it actually already started on Thursday. Um, because we live in a city center, um, we cannot escape all the madness. So, on I don't know why I'm telling you this, because it's so not interesting, but I will tell you about Saturday. So, Saturday, um, we went to my boyfriend's work. My boyfriend's name is Seep, by the way. Um, because his work it was near the... Well, uh, next to the, the track. Um, so Seep and some of his other colleagues organized... Um, Seep and some of his... <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't, I can't do this without messing it up. I don't know how many people have so much fun with just themselves, but I do. So let's do that again! Seep and some of his other colleagues, they organized something for the whole firm. Um, and they got to invite family and other people. So, um, we went there and there were about 200 people from his, uh, from his firm, from his work. And um, we also invited my uncle and my uh, nephew, uh, which was really nice. So we just watched them, cheered them on, um, had some drinks, um, but it was really, really hot. It was like 38. Uh, degrees and I don't know how much that is in the system you guys use um, Fahrenheit I guess I don't know but it was really hot I will look it up so now I know it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit so hot um but we had a lovely time um, and when we got back from his work we actually planned to go into the city, well, outside um, and have some drinks but we looked at each other and we were so tired from all the sun and the standing up and the cheering and so we decided to call it a day and go to sleep uh, then on Sunday, um, 
because on Saturday they did the time lapse, and on Sunday um, the real the real tour actually started. Um, so the Peloton came actually came um, by our house, um, but because we have a tiny um, tiny window and. We wanted to see up close. We went outside and um, we sat in the sun. It was a lot, well, not a lot. It was a little bit cooler than uh, Saturday, so that was nice. And um, well, we just waited. And when they came, they really passed quickly. So uh, we, I think we waited there for like one and a half hours and took them less than a minute, I guess, to pass. So that was interesting, but it was nice to see. And it was, it was a lot of fun. The whole city was one big partying and nice. It was a nice atmosphere. So really cool. Although I have to say that we were pretty happy that all of the noise s stopped last night so um, so that was my weekend I will insert a video of uh, of them passing by yesterday uh, at the end of this episode so you can kind of experience it with us um, then I guess it's time for my whips um, so let's start it. Um, my first whip is the one you already saw um, last week, but I didn't show you the pattern, or at least I didn't show you the how it looked, how it should look when it's finished, because sometimes things I make don't look the way they should, so it's good to see how it should look. So. I guess there's no... That is uh, the finished shell, uh, the finished Viajante shell I'm working on. And um, as you can see here, it's just this really, it's kind of a really long cowl. And um, it starts here and this circumference is pretty small, like a normal cowl, and over here it's really big, so you can also wear it as a poncho, and you can see that here, that it's it's pretty big. So, um, I think last time I had two, uh, I was like two purple stripes in, and now I'm this far. So you can see I worked on it. Um, it's actually um, a lot of work, I guess, because I'm not nearly finished at all. So um, this will take me more time than I guess I thought it would, but I will continue it. Um, I. I am, however, already noticing that it's starting to get a little bit boring because it's just stuck in it the whole way through up until the end where it's lace, but I think I might change that lace pattern and use another lace pattern, I don't know yet, but um, I, I just hope it'll block out um, so um, it'll be big enough when I finish because it's a lot of work, but I'm, um, well, I'm already uh, ready to start the sixth uh, purple stripe, and it kind of looks blue on the screen, but it's actually more purple, the, this yarn. So um, that's coming along, I guess, I hope I will... Um, I hope I will continue knitting as much 
knitting on it as much as I do right now and not put it away because it's getting boring. So, although I have to say that making these podcasts actually help me finish stuff because otherwise I look like a fool to you guys. So, I actually think I worked on this a little bit more as a, than I should have or than I would have um, without these podcast videos. So, that is a plus. Um, and I'm knitting this out of my own uh, hand dyed yarn, which I didn't name yet, and I still didn't take pictures because I was uh, really busy. So I will try to take pictures of this and dye up some more um, today after recording this. Uh, then I worked a little on my uh, sweater, which I already told you I don't have a pattern for. I just made it up myself, but it's really simple. And I finished the... Um, the border. So I uh, am going to start picking up these stitches, these stitches for the sleeves, and then um, I will try to finish this really. Um, I will try to finish this soon because I actually really want to uh, take this with me when we go to visit my parents in Italy uh, at their um, summer house. I don't know how you call that. Um, because we will be dining outside and uh, late at night it can be really chilly. So this will be really nice and then I wouldn't have to take some sort of jacket or something like that because this will be really warm. Um, I'm knitting this out of drops. Oh, where did I leave it? Um, oh, here it is. Extra fine merino. I didn't show you the ball bands last week, but I will now. It's it's this yarn, and you might not be able to read it because my camera is recording. like the other way around, mirrored, I don't know how you say that, but everything is, <laughs> I don't know, everything is upside down, the other way around, flipped, I don't know, everything is not where it's supposed to be. So if you think that this cabinet is really uh, to the left of me, you are wrong because it's to the right. So, funny camera. So that might make my face look decent after all because everything is flipped back around again. I don't know. But that's the yarn I'm um, making this sweater, sweater with. Um, and I actually hope to finish this, um, well, I could say next week, but that's not going to happen. Let's be realistic. That is not going to happen. So, at least by the end of July, because then we will be going to Italy. So, fingers crossed. Then I started something new because, hey, I'm the starting new projects kind of girl um, and it's actually almost finished already but that's because it's really tiny um, I have this um, friend uh, who lives in Portugal um, she and uh, her boyfriend moved there and uh, I already know him for well for a, for a really long time since we were little kids and um, they just had a baby so I had to knit something for the baby it's a girl her name is Julia 
and I saw this pattern which is the mossy sweater and um, it's a little sweater for kids you might be able I, I, I will try to it's that um, and um, I thought let's knit that but because they are in Portugal I made some modifications because it's pretty warm over there so I um, decided to pick some thinner yarn and um, I decided to not do sleeves and change the well some other other things but this is what I have so far and I think it's a really cute so what I changed is I um, added some more buttons here I didn't do this or any other other part in mall stitch because I just liked it to be I just wanted it to be some more simple especially what because I did it in two colors um, so I um, did it all in garter stitch so all the edging and um, the buttons and uh, the bottom that's all uh, garter stitch um, and I knit it out of cotton so it's a little bit more appropriate for warm weather um, or suitable I guess um, and the only thing I have to do uh, is pick up the stitches for the uh, for the sleeves and uh, knit a few rows of garter stitch because I will keep them as short sleeves so I think I only have this much yarn left which is not much but I think it will be enough to do like three rows or something like that three or four rows the same as I did uh, at the bottom so um, I will um, Hopefully, I will I will finish this uh, this week, and then I will hopefully send it to them, or I will uh, give it to uh, give it with to one of their visitors because they have a lot of people visiting them in the summer, um, so they will have it soon, ish, um, and I hope this will fit. Um, we'll see. I didn't block it yet obviously. I don't know if cotton really blocks um, tell me if you know that. I will know soon I guess because I will wash it and put it somewhere to I don't know. I will see that but tell me if you know anything about the difference between cotton and normal wool yarn but I like it. Cute. Um, and those are my uh, whips. Um, then finished objects. I don't have any. Um, but I will probably have some next week. So that's fine as well. And to be honest, it was really hot here, as I already told you so I think I knit quite a quite a bit for the hot weather we had um, so I'm proud of myself um, then stash enhancements I don't really have stash enhancements because I have a really big stash which I will show you one day um, because we are going to Indonesia for three and a half weeks in September so I guess you will be missing my videos then because I will not have 
time or um, place or a possibility to um, upload anything. So I guess I will um, make some videos um, showing you my stash and maybe some of my knitting books or something else um, up front so you can see those while I'm away. Um, but I did purchase um, a pattern which I have been wanting to make for a very long time. And I think I want to take this with me to Indonesia, but I don't know if that's a good idea. So if you have already did this, tell me. It is Exploration Station. Um, I will try to show you something without giving the pattern away. This is what it looks like when it's finished, and I love it. Um, it's by Stephen West, which I think, um, who I think is well known. And um, I think this is, I, I think this is going to be a perfect knit because there are so many different um, techniques and bits and parts in it that I think, to me, it won't be um, boring. It won't be able to get boring because every time you knit a part then something else comes up and you have to start another color, another technique. So I guess it has short rows in it and it also has some brioche in it. It has some lace in it and all those different colors. So. Uh, I guess this part is brioche and you have some short row shaping here and um, of course the lace border and all those different colors so I guess you use four different colors and that's the part I'm a little bit hesitant about because bringing four, <clears throat> four different colors of yarn to Indonesia might not be very handy in an airplane but on the other hand I will be bringing a lot of yarn anyway so I might as well bring different colors right I don't know so if you have any tips anyway about airplane knitting because we will be in, an air in the airplane for about 15 hours I guess which is a long time so I have to have enough knitting with me so I guess I also will I will also be um, bringing some small project I guess socks or something like that but if you have any tips um, on what I should knit on the airplane or if you have any other patterns um, that are really nice tell me because I'm already <laughs> I'm already stressing out about having the perfect projects to take with me because I will be gone for three and a half weeks so and the first two and a half weeks we will be backpacking so I don't have a lot of room but I do want to knit and I will probably be knitting every evening or whenever we are, whenever we have the time to sit down or, or something like that. So um, I'm actually already planning what I should bring and also the needles because I hear everyone talking about um, the fact that wooden needles uh, won't be a problem but then I do see some people uh, saying that they had to hand them in hand them over um, so what do what is the best way to take knitting needles without them seeing them or noticing them or them taking <clears throat> the needles away um, 
because if they take my needles, I don't think I will survive 15 hours on a plane. Because to be honest, um, I'm a little bit scared of um, flying. And I take uh, the uh, meds um, against the motion sickness because I also have motion sickness so that's a problem as well but they uh, those meds uh, make you sleepy so then I will be calm and probably fall asleep but then I wake up and then I realize that we only had like three hours in the plane and that we have still that we still have 12 hours to go and then I I, I don't know I we went to I went to Jamaica once and it, I was fine up until the last hours I was I was like get me out of here open the door I want to get out um, because I want to breathe I want to have fresh air I want to get out of the s stupid tiny plane um, I I'm pretty I'm a pretty tall woman, I guess. I'm 180 meters. I don't know what 180 meters is in your metric system. I will check that as well. Okay, now I know. 1.8 meters is 5.9 feet. So almost 6 feet. So, um, I have long legs and they, most of the time, that doesn't go well together with being on an airplane, um, so, I don't know, I don't, I just don't like plane rides, so, um, and the, um, landing part is a funny part because you would say, then you should get excited because you can leave the plane almost but I think it's really scary so whenever the plane goes down 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 and I see the ground I I have really mixed feelings because on one hand I'm excited and I'm like oh yes I can see trees and I can see houses and stuff and on the other hand I'm like yes I can see those trees and houses and that's a problem because we might bump into one so, um, then I always grab my boyfriend's um, hand and probably the hand of the person next to me and totally squish him and hold my breath, turn blue, yellow, purple, whatever, and then when the airplane hits the ground, my heart drops and then it breaks and then I'm like okay we didn't die and everyone can have their hands back and I can get some fresh air again or some oxygen or whatever and I turn into my normal color again um, so maybe the knitting will help me um, keep my sanity um, it might already do that without the plane. So that's a pattern I really want to knit. And then um, I thought I might tell you about other patterns I really want to knit because why not? So um, I also recently bought and started but had to rip it out again because I made a mistake because honestly I never have finished objects without mistakes so the pattern I'm talking about is uh, the canopy shawl and I'm it's I have a picture my this was before I changed the printer cartridges so it's not a stripe shawl it's a stripey printer and maybe you can see it there a little better and this is a pattern by Melody from uh, the Mandarins uh, podcast 
um, which is a really nice podcast as well, so check it out if you haven't already. And I love the shawl, so uh, be also because it has these different parts. It has um, stockinette and then uh, a lace part, stockinette, lace, stockinette, and then uh, an applied lace border. So that's really nice because then it won't be boring to me. But the problem is I already started it. I, c I could show you um, if I have it here. I don't have it here. I guess. Or maybe I... Oh, maybe it's in here. Yes, it's in here. So I have to rip it out. Um... I made a mistake in the lace. It's pretty simple. I made a mistake in the lace, so... I just have to start over. The problem only is that this yarn um, is not really able to... It's not really able... I'm not really able to rip this yarn out because it's... It, it clings together or something like that. I mean... So I will probably have to throw the, this whole part away, which is a shame, but hey, I can't help it, so whatever. Um, so I want to start that over and maybe in some other yarn. I guess, I, I don't know, I might do that in some other yarn. Then. I also recently purchased the Fish Lips Kiss Heel. Um, and I didn't try it out yet. So I might bring some socks on the airplane, maybe? Or just try it before and uh, try it. But I think it's pretty funny that all these shawls have like two or three page patterns and then you have this part of a project pattern a heel and it's super big so but um, everyone else said that you only need the last pages so I think it's just it's not that that bad and what I really like about this is that it's um, hole free because whenever I do a normal heel um, you always get some holes somewhere and I don't I don't like that so um, I'm really curious how this knits up or how this works so I will do that uh, in some of the uh, not in some of the in the future in the nearby future or whatever my english won't be really good all the time because i'm not from england i'm not from the us so it's not my mother language you call that mother language i'm going to check that mother tongue i think google is i think it's native language that's probably it mother tongue that's uh, really a uh, weird, but maybe it's not. Whatever. Those are my upcoming projects, and I don't know when I'm going to start them, but I will definitely do them in 2015. So then, um, I guess the only thing that's left is to tell you something about my shop or shop update or whatever. So if you don't like that, then I will see you next time hopefully and if you do like that stick around um i don't have a lot to show you um i already told you about the yarn i'm knitting um my viajante shawl in um this will be in the shop soon then i dyed up some other some another uh colorway because uh, I wanted some speckled yarn, so I dyed up 
this. And it has um, pink, yellow, brown, and some really tiny speckly, speckly bits of blue, bluish green in it. Um, as you can see here, and a little bit in the brown. Um, and it's dyed on my uh, glitz, gl glitter, glitter base. I don't know how you call that. Um, so it has 5% Stellina in it. So it's speckle, it's glittery, it's super fun. And I haven't named this yet, so um, I am going to have to do that. And this is what it looks like rescanned. Um, but I like it better when it's not rescanned. So, um, I will dye up some more because I think I will keep this one for myself. And um, probably I will probably use this in um, the... Uh, I already forgot. What is it? The Exploration Station uh, pattern. Um, so then I have one left that's going in the shop and I will dye up some more and I will try some other speckled um, colorways because I really like speckled yarn. Um, so this will be in the shop um, somewhere this week. I will, after I finish this, I will dye and take photos from some yarns and uh, dye some yarns and take photos and then hopefully uh, by the end of this week or maybe sooner I don't know um, I will have some extra yarn in the shop and I have something really exciting to tell you because I have something really nice for all of you Etsy shoppers um, as you know, I just opened up my Etsy shop and while I already sell uh, through my Dutch website, which is wallbox.nl, um, meant for Dutch people, uh, I didn't sell on Etsy yet. I have all these people uh, that really like my yarn, and uh, but I didn't sell anything yet, which is logical, it's just opened, but um, I uh, wanted to do something for you guys. The first 10 buyers uh, will get something extra, and that something extra could be minis from other colors of, of my yarn. I don't, I will not add these colors in the shop yet, but I have minis, so nice! and. Um, or maybe some nice um, row counter, digital row counter, um, which is really handy and uh, you can uh, put that around your finger and super handy. So the first 10 customers that will buy from my Etsy shop will get extras, which is really cool. So buy from my Etsy shop people so um, I guess that's it um, I will um, put the links to the patterns I talked about in the description box below and um, I just hope to see you next time and if you like my yarn buy it because you get all the extras Bye!